Dan, congratulations. It must be a great honour to join the leadership group and to be nominated by your peers. Uh, yeah, it definitely is. Um, it's obviously not the first time I've been in the leadership group, but uh, I had a little bit of a break and, yeah, I just thought, um, and obviously the team thought as well, that um, I'm the oldest in the group, so I've got a little bit of knowledge and uh, been able to use that from a player's point of view and, yeah, and just um, help this group forward. Uh, I thought it was appropriate that I, put, I go come back into the group and uh, leadership group and um, and yeah and just help drive those standards. You spoke about that uh, obviously being in the leadership group before your first year was in 2009 under Jonathan Brown. What did you learn from that experience? Um, I suppose back then, uh, Brownie was a great leader. And we had um, we had some pretty pretty dominant personalities back then too. So. I just think through this whole period, I haven't got a very uh, off the field, I don't really have an outgoing personality, so I just think through this whole period and time, you just got to trust your judgement. Um, everyone leads in a different way and, um, and everyone has different opinions as well, so being able to respect that. So I just think through the years that I've been in, in that role that you've just got to yeah, trust your judgement and, um, and put your opinion forward. and. Um, yeah, not uh, not doubt yourself. Yeah, no stranger to leadership. You have a pretty big role down back in defence for the Lions. How will kind of that help you in this role? Um, yeah, I think so. The last few years, I've been probably just being more of a mentor uh, role rather than taking the actual uh, leadership. Uh, yeah, in the leadership team. So, yeah, nothing really changes from my point of view. I um, I've got a pretty big role down there, and and I, and I love it. Um, being able to get this young back line up and running and um, we're under the pump a little bit last year so we've got to bounce back um, from, uh, from, a, from a disappointing uh, year last year so yeah it's just about mentoring, helping through, using my experience down there and um, yeah just being, trying to be another coach out in the field for them. Speaking of mentoring, you've had Josh Shackey stay with you, your wife and your daughter, how did you find that experience? Yeah, he's still there. Um, <laughs> nah, he's going really well. Um, Josh is, uh, he's pretty quiet. I think his nickname in our S Academy was Humphrey because he didn't say much. So he's pretty quiet. So we don't actually hear a lot of him. Um, but nah, it's good. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that Josh come and stayed with us. So I just think, um, yeah, the first year, it's, uh, it's always hard moving away from home and try and, I'm going to try and make that as comfortable as possible. But then also, um, yeah, give him a few tips along the way and just about how you prepare yourself for games uh, week in, week out. I spoke to Dane Beams the other day. He said that having Eric Hipwood there, he, who needs to put on a good 10, 15 kilos, was quite hard because he was trying to maintain his weight. Was it a bit the same for you? Uh, yeah, well, I don't, I don't drink milk and I don't uh, have bread either, so... It was a bit of a change up for uh, Shaki to try and get used to not having milk and that, but he's uh, he's adapted pretty well, and I reckon uh, he come with a bit of bit of puppy fat when he when he first rocked up, and it looks like he's he's leaned up a lot. So um, I'm not saying it's our cooking, but he's uh, he's obviously working very hard on the track, and yeah, he's changing his body shape already. It's uh, yeah, it's just interesting to watch the process happen from uh, from home.